All right, I'll do it. Let's talk about compression. When I was putting out things on my social media saying, what should I talk about? Um, I made it a point to be like, I don't want to just explain compression because I don't want this channel to be tutorial based. I'm not an expert. I'm not even that knowledgeable. I just practically use methods to make records. I've been making records for a couple of years with clients. I get paid to do it. I have fun. I enjoy some of the things that, I've, <laughs> that come out of it and I, other people enjoy how my recordings come out. All I want to do with this channel is share my practical insights, the things I've used, the way I use them. Nothing is perfect. I mix in an apartment. I didn't even put up my treatment today. It's pretty live. I'm super not pretty and perfect about this stuff. So from me saying, I don't want to tackle the compression thing, I actually got people going, well, no, I want to hear you talk about compression. So the best way I can find to do that, I'm not going to explain what a compressor does. There's plenty of information out there. Once you dig into that rabbit hole a little bit, you fall in. The information's out there and it's all, it's kind of confusing. Compression is kind of confusing. All the time I get people who want to buy compression pedals or something. Reach out to me and, and, and talk about the pedal and I'll be like, I don't know why you're buying this. And they'll be like, well, because compression does this, right? And I'll be like, maybe, kind of, sometimes, depends on everything. The way I started using compression and not ruining my mixes, oh my God, I had a crack bundle. I was pulling up stuff. I didn't know what it was supposed to emulate. I didn't know what it was supposed to do. I saw red lights going off and I'd go, why does my, my shit sound terrible? You could say it sounded tiny. You could say it sounded whatever terms you want to use to describe sound. It sounded bad. All of us would agree if we listened to those mixes. I didn't know what I was doing and it sounded bad. One thing I can say about compression is pick compressors based on tone and put them in safe positions. What's a safe position? Slowest attack, fastest release. It'll get you into the least amount of trouble. I would do that and I would just watch meters go, but I'd feel good about it. And eventually I started hearing the saturation on it. And eventually I would mess with the attack time a little bit, still leaving release. Cause if a release is really quick, it's gonna, you know, a compressor. All right, here we go. A compressor. <laughs> Uh, is basically going to grab a signal and let go of a signal. And, and when it grabs it, it'll sometimes sealing it depending on how much, how high of a ratio you give it. The release though is what really gets you into trouble because the longer it clamps onto something, the more it, it holds it back, the more it makes it stuffy. If you leave the release at the quickest time, and you start messing with the attack time, attack times are usually working in milliseconds, both of these. So sometimes, like when you first start training your ear, it's hard to hear. It, it just, it, you know, and, and eventually I started being able to hear attack times and I would, I'd be tracking a guitar and I'd make the attack time in the 1176 next to me really quick. And I was like, there's something I like about that, the quickest time. And then, and then you read about it and people are like, quick attack times are rubbing off top end and, 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 and ruining the transient and stuff. And I'm like, I don't know, I liked it, I don't know. And I listened to those guitars on that record and I still like it a lot. So, uh, as I got deeper into ear training, that's when I started getting more risky with the setting, settings I was willing to use. But, first thing you should do is, is pick a compressor based on tone, especially with vocals and with everything else. So, here's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna dig through a session and I'll kinda go top to bottom on it and we'll see how I used compression across the session. So let's go into the session. And this is gonna spin or something. So this is a song by a band I worked with called Trick the Riddle. Super fun record to work on. Uh, super fun band to work with. Let's start with vocals. So in the, in, the, in the spirit of talking about going for tone, there are a couple things, you know, this is all creative, but there are a couple things that people have just decided that's a good thing to put on this. And there's probably transformer information. There, there's probably reasons technically why, but these things work and a lot of people agree on it. So what Michael Brower does is he has multiple faders that, you know, he sends off to the one compressor that a lot of people like, right? So it's like a blue, a blue stripe 1176 and he comes back and that's on a fader. And then he's got 
you know, whatever, a retro 176 or something else. That's another compressor people like on vocals. Okay, great, that's on a fader too. So now instead of me making these choices or something like that, he's got them up and he could kind of shoot them out or he can kind of blend them and stuff. I started doing it and the reason I started doing that more so than the tone thing was because I now have two more faders of vocal and I'm, it's never a problem, no matter how loud I just got the guitars and everything to get my vocals to come peak out because with gain staging, which is something else we'll talk about in another video, uh, when you start getting things loud in the box and then you need something to come up above it, you hit a ceiling. So for me, uh, I just like knowing that I have two more faders of, of vocal compression and these are them. Blue 1176, uh, I use the Slate one because that's what I got and it, honestly their plugins sound amazing and the Plague Child. Um, and I figured since I'm pulling up the, 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 the plugin for it, I might as well just throw VMR on there because the more I can get that on every channel, the more, the more alive everything feels. All right, so this is what the, the blue 1176 sounds like. Gonna be in if you'll be all right. Gonna be in if you'll... Gonna be in if you'll be all right. Spinning lights, he's getting dizzy. I think he's gonna drop. Funny feeling, he's appealing, he'll never have enough. Just feels like it's getting louder, right? Um, I actually do these in pre also, you could see on the send. And that way I can actually, like if I really want to, take out the main vocal and now I can just hear what this is going on. Spinning lights, he's getting dizzy, I think he's gonna drop. So you could, you know, it's, it's pretty clamped. This actually tends to be thicker, fatter, I don't want to say warmer, but just, it, it just tends to, it actually tends to have a bit of a modern color to me. Um, when I'm, when I'm flying through a session, getting my static mix up and I want to kind of get faders in places, I'm going to leave them. Um, that's usually what I'm thinking is this thing is going to come in with more fidelity to it. The 660 is an awesome vocal compressor. It was one of the first plug-in compressors I bought when I finally understood how to use it. Uh, how to use uh, compression. This thing is just, it's raunchy, it's clampy, it's explodey. Uh, and I, I put it at the setting three. Seems like a slower release to me, but uh, so this is what that one sounds like on its own. Spinning lights, he's getting dizzy. I think he's gonna drop. Funny feeling, he's appealing. He'll never have enough. And that usually tends to be brighter to me. And sometimes if someone's voice is too bright, I, I try not to have preconceived notions, but I'll, I'll try the blue a little hotter and then, you know, I think I rarely use one or the other. They always end up in together. Um, but, and so this is what they sound like together. Spinning lights, he's, spinning lights, he's getting dizzy. I think he's gonna drop. Spinning lights, he's getting dizzy. I think he's gonna drop. Spinning lights, he's getting dizzy. I think he's gonna drop. Spinning lights, he's getting dizzy. I think he's gonna drop. Right, so you can see, like, if I lead the path at the 660, it's got an awesome tonality to it. Um, but then once I start bringing in the blue, I'm getting low end or something out of it. Uh, just, just something. It's more sad. It's just, it's a different color, literally different saturation. Uh, but I like the sound of both of them and I rarely check them. Like, let's see what the blue is even doing. Spinning lights, he's getting dizzy. I think he's gonna drop. Cool. About 10 dB is awesome. Every now and again, I open these and, and spinning lights, he's getting dizzy. I think he's yeah, about 10 dB. I have my, my session set up so that uh, the gain staging kind of works itself out um, for the most part. But, uh, you know, every now and again, I just don't even check these. And I'm just like blending and, you know, they're parallel. This is the thing about parallel compression that people love, uh, which is a whole other topic. But, you know, when you run compression in parallel, you can kind of take more chances and risks because you always have the untouched um, version of that to kind of blend them back. You know, something cool about parallel is it, it, it mashes, it ruins things. The bad part is, is it mashes and ruins things. So this is a way of doing best of both worlds. However, the reason I'm not talking that much about parallel compression with this case is because guess what? I got compression on insert two. 
because one day uh, Slate <laughs> finally released the, the FG Stress, their Distressor plugin, and this thing sounds bad ass. And especially when you got Distortion 3, that was one of the first things. Again, you're talking about subtle harmonic things. Man, this was not subtle at all. It is just distorted. It's raunchy. And uh, nine times out of 10, I like that. Every now and again, I'm, I'm wondering why the vocal sounds so hairy and I'll have to come and kind of flip this back or get rid of it all together or something like that. I am not shy at all with this. You can see I'm actually attacking it pretty quick. With this compressor, you'll hear when you're using a, a quicker attack, it's just clamping on, on the freaking thing. And sometimes we'll see throughout the session, if I'm using this compressor, that's the first place I'm gonna check if I want things to kind of fucking back off a little bit. Uh, but let's hear what this is doing alone, no other compression. I'm gonna bypass EQ. Spinning light tees, getting dizzy, I think he's gonna drop. Spinning light tees, getting dizzy, I think he's gonna drop. Obviously it's adding a bit of uh, volume. Let's see if I can actually get rid of a little bit of that. Spinning light tees, getting dizzy, I think he's gonna drop. Spinning light tees, getting dizzy, I think he's gonna drop. Adding a little bit of gain, uh, giving me a little more volume, rightfully so, why not? That's great gain staging in my mind. If I'm, as long as I'm not pulling, I mean, I'm pulling back a little bit here, but uh, as long as I'm just adding gain along in the chain, I'm freaking happy with that. I don't care if it got a little louder. But you can still hear, even when I, when I level matched a little bit, his voice is just coming forward. He's spitting in your face now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's exciting. It's aggressive. And let's just see also when I slow the attack to kind of what I was saying before, uh, you could see quickest release because I don't, I don't want, I don't want to hold on to this because I'm never gonna get breath out of it, especially because I'm doing things in parallel. Spinning light tees, getting dizzy. I think he's gonna drop. Spinning light tees, getting dizzy. I think he's gonna drop. Spinning light tees, getting dizzy. I think he's gonna drop. Spinning light tees, getting dizzy, I think he's gonna drop. Yeah, so when I, when I slow down the attack, you can definitely hear more things coming through first. It kind of, it makes it a little more natural and realistic sounding, but I just, I'm loving the sound of it being clamped. This is a rock song. This uh, staging of compressors honestly stops me from doing vocal rides a lot, and I know there's debates about that stuff, but this does it for me where I don't feel like I'm sucking all the life and dynamics out of stuff. Nine times out of 10, when you leave too much dynamics out of stuff, that is your first mix note. Don't know why my words are this and this and that. I mean, this is riding for me. I'm happy with this. I like the sound of this compressor and I, I like letting it do a job and work on something in the corner of my session I don't have to even think about. Um, and sometimes I'll back off on it. Honestly, even the parallels here too, because I was just talking about release time. Quickest release, you know? And I, who knows which one this is. Spinning light tees, getting dizzy. I think he's gonna drop. You can see the, you could just see the Puig child's having a hard time recovering, um, which is great. That's awesome. Let's move on.